What's up guys, it is Sam here from Sam and Junior Talk Money and I have arrived in Bali. So I actually arrived two days ago, but we actually had some friends to meet here. So it's kind of chilled out and recovered for the last two days from our time like in Japan and Korea and Singapore. And I was going to show you what it is like here in Bali, in Ubud, in the Gili Islands, a bit of Nusa Penina and then also to Uluwatu as well. So we're here for like 28 days. So hopefully you'll like enjoy this and just see a bit about the country itself like but uh, yeah this is where we're staying currently so that accommodation for the week is basically 26 27 euros a night which is yeah it's pretty good um because some of the accommodation here has now gotten quite expensive um as it's such a popular destination for people to come to one thing is here, there is so much construction going on here, uh, kind of everywhere really. Um, they're building all up for more tourism essentially, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much everywhere. Cool buildings like this, kind of pretty much like everywhere as well. Um, just like small little kind of like temples, small temples everywhere. Um, can't really go into them though, so not really sure why that is. Uh, but yeah, so loud with all of the bikes everywhere. And this is a quiet road. It's really, really, really busy further up. It's like a Roman type statue of a head. And then also like a little one beside her. <laughs> I don't know. And then you've got this fella holding up the whole place. How much fun is it? So yeah, that meal was really, really good um, for breakfast. It was like 70k each, which is like about 450. And you got your coffee, smoothie bowl, and a little juice drink as well. Like so, and yeah, it was really, really good. Like we got ones, the ones that I showed you in the Singapore video, like they were way smaller and not as good at all. Like. Um, so yeah, like high ring men that sort of stuff. Very, very cheap and affordable. And now we're actually going to the gym, so I'm not really gonna record that. These kind of things are also like all over the ground here. Um, it's like a religious offering to, like, to the gods and stuff. So you'll see these everywhere, so just don't stand on them, whatever you do. More construction. More of this. <laughs> the place. So saying again, you've got so much construction, all these new villas like coming up on both sides. So like they're actually getting rid of a lot of the rice areas that are now just becoming like, these developments for people to come and yeah, now stay here. As well, you also see like, the black marks here, it's where they like burn the top of the rice as well to get it ready for our new settings like so. Yeah, the amount of building here is crazy. Like it's gonna be very, very built up in a couple of years. So like what people don't really show you about this place on Instagram and stuff, that there is absolutely rubbish everywhere. Um, compared to where we have been in Asia, where it was very, very limited, it's absolutely everywhere here. And obviously it's a more developing country, but Instagram and people that are here, they don't show you this kind of stuff, um, which I will show you um, whenever the kind of the opportunity comes across. But now we're walking up to a rice fields just behind our accommodation and it is really, really nice. So they're obviously they're not in full like bloom at the moment. They've some of them been burnt and stuff for the new crops like but you can kind of see the terraces as you go up like so yeah it's very very nice out here and you can actually see a bit of the farmers and stuff up here as well so I'm gonna have a look at that too. You can kind of see the smoke up there so they're burning the fields but uh yeah lots of people working in the fields and stuff as well. This is kind of more of what you expect. Bali and what you see on Instagram like but obviously with them more fully grown than they are right now
Oh, the ducks. We are here as well. So the burning I was on about, like, we're gonna have to actually gonna have to walk straight through it. <laughs> oh, <I'm> fucking rotten. <laughs> And one thing as well, like this area of Bali, like it's not very walkable. Uh, we've walked a bit, like, but like it takes you ages to walk because there's so much traffic all around. Um, this area now on the rice field, like there's minimal traffic, like so we've actually been able to walk through here, which is nice. Because um, yeah, I haven't got on any of the scooters or anything yet, and I don't know will I either, because uh, I've never used one before. But I have a lesson in the morning on how to use them, so hopefully. There actually is some green lush rice fields over there, but we can't really see the terraces from here and I can't really get much closer. Uh, where we're staying, like, is it's just behind these, so we're doing like a big kind of loop and around, like, but there's so many nice buildings being built here um, that you can kind of see, like, they're just like all like the resort stuff, like, just like, just like over there, here, it's just all resorts, and then you just have. Uh, the extreme like kind of poverty in some places too which isn't really shown to you so we're kind of like in like the suburbs area like nearly of Kangu like and it's a lot more peaceful it's not that many people and you've got this these huge villas that are being built basically just for tourists and um, I don't think many many locals live in any of them but uh you see it's all being built and they're all like really really nice like big grand doors everything like that um, but yeah, it's, it's not for locals whatsoever. Just getting a light lunch here. It was like 60,000, which is in and around 350, like hummus, eggs, pumpkin, onion. We also have a little courtyard like this, a little kitchen over there. This is us like sitting out, like so. There's like four, and four, and four. So there's like 12 spaces like to stay here. And yeah, I couldn't really recommend it enough. You're away from all the busyness of the center. So we are down at the beach just for our first sunset because we missed pretty much all of them because we've just been either drinking or busy. But uh, yeah, we're kind of on a beanbag on the beach here just to yeah relax and watch this and get a coconut. Which, uh, look, it is what it is, it is nice. So the sunset here is actually very, very cool now, but um, it just doesn't really look like it on my camera at all. I can't catch it, what it actually looks like here. Um, but yeah, no, it's pretty good. Definitely worth doing at least once. So today we have come down to the Tana Lot a temple which is kind of just down by the coast so you can look out onto it it's like out in the water but uh, you just arrived kind of into like the car park here and you've got these like cool little statues a nice little gate then as well just behind it there so yeah we're gonna go in here and have a look it was like three quid 325 or something to to come in and our taxi was I don't know like 250 each or something to come down here like so yeah we're gonna go down now and have a look and see what's going on so here is the Luax, so these produce the coffee, so they eat the coffee beans and then it comes out of them and, and it's made into coffee. Apparently the nicest coffee in the world, like, but we are going to have it 
at some point. But uh, yeah, there's a coffee shop just here at the temple that's doing it. So uh, that is interesting. So this area is all like really, really nice. And you've got just like lots of shops and stuff. And then you're coming up to the like arch here. So you've got this kind of old gate. But some of the details of the statues here is unbelievable. Just out to the sea then down there. So this is the Tanalot temple that's over there. It can only be accessed when like the tide is low. It's high at the moment, like you can see like from the waves are just absolutely massive over there. But yeah, the Dante is the temple that people come to see, like, but it's not accessible by tourists anyway. It's only for local uh, Balinese and Hindus to come and pray. Um, the tourists obviously can just come and look in the surrounding areas as well. The waves here are absolutely massive. Look at that. Look at that coming in. So now that we're out like a bit more rural, it's a lot quieter, there's less rubbish and yeah, the fields and stuff are all like really, really nice and there's actually rice that's in uh, like full bloom here. So yeah, it's really no it is really nice. Um, it's just like in the Kangoo center area where most people are and most people stay, it does get quite dirty and quite overcrowded. So this is our last morning here in Changu. Um, to be honest, like, I haven't really filmed much around here. There's not much to really see. We just kind of like relax, like we went to a water park and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, it's a nice place, good cafes, good food and stuff around, but like our accommodation and stuff here is really, really good. So we spent a lot of time just kind of like just relaxing and resetting. And we're off to Ubud now today, which should be good. And we're gonna be there for like five, six days. And we're gonna try and get to a new Sapinia for one day as well before we go to the Kitty Islands. Like, so yeah, enjoy my time here. Um, but yeah, can't wait to look at more of the Island really more so than just being around this one area. So guys, we have just arrived in Ubud, and this is our accommodation. So it's roughly coming in around 30 to 35 a night. I'm not exactly sure, but this is what it is. It's unbelievable. We have our pool. There's only one of the people staying here as well, so quite an area to yourself. Some nice little stone figures over there. Some beds. And then up here, we actually have like nearly a whole kind of kitchen area for us, which is uh, yeah, pretty mad. And then into our room. We're also out there sitting here, we'll be having our breakfast just here. And then also, look at the size of this bed. It's like two double beds. And the room is really, really big. Wardrobe, Laura. And yeah, this is the bathroom. Shit. This is the bathroom shower. Toilet. But yeah, really, really nice. And yeah, can't wait to 
start looking around here because it is looking very, very cool. So this is the road that we're on. So this is like the main road coming up. So you really kind of feel like you're basically kind of in the jungle, which is kind of cool. I know it's not, it's built up in areas, but it's kind of cool that this stuff is just right outside our door. Um, very different to where we were, it's a lot more built up in those cafes, like just at the end of the road, like so. Yeah, looking forward to looking around now and we're just gonna head down to the center of Ubud, hopefully go into the palace if it's not too late. And uh, yeah, just get a bit to eat. So the traffic here in Ubud is also still really, really bad. Uh, the locals have told us that, but uh, now we're seeing it. And yeah, it's just as bad as Kangu or Semiak or Kuta, all the same. There's a mix of like just Westerners as well, tourists, but yeah, it's pretty bad, especially further down there. Not moving at all. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the palace is very nice. <laughs> it's just so mob of people. Like it's crazy. People have to wait for pictures. It's just, it's just bonkers and people shouting at me to get out of the way there, but, oh, I don't know, like, look at that. They're running things over there. Showing all that, see everyone's just queuing up to get their pictures in front of them doors. Um, yeah, it's just funny. It's, it's just so kind of overcrowded and small little picture places. Like, and I imagine it's going to be the same for a lot of it here in uh, Ubud. But uh, yeah, now we're just going to go to a coffee shop, see what it's like. Obviously, sitting on like a rice paddy, so it'll be nice. These roads are literally just all only made for like scooters like and people walking. It's pretty mad. So we've come to a fire show that we picked up a ticket off by outside the temple that we were at earlier. So yeah, I'm going to show you what that yeah. is and what it about because I have no idea what we're about to see. That was the fire dance that we were at earlier, and like, like it was something different. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, Laura also enjoyed it as well. Like it was something like completely different, and just to see a bit about like their culture and their religion that is here. Um, but yeah, it was very very cheap. It was like a hundred thousand rupee, which is like six twenty or something like that euros. Like so, yeah, it was for about an hour, and yeah, it was well worth it in my opinion. And yeah, it was just a bit of fun, uh, something different that we haven't seen before. Right, so today we are going out to some of the waterfalls that are near here and you've probably seen all these on Instagram and stuff as well, a lot of the famous waterfalls. Like, So we're going to try and hit up maybe two or three today, um, we're going to rent a scooter and go out. So like, yeah, I went on a scooter like twice uh, with the previous uh, accommodation and like I've never been on one before, like, so this is the first time kind of fully like on my own. So yeah, hopefully all goes all, all right, I'm just going to get like a small one and go out. So. Hopefully you'll enjoy looking at these waterfalls that are here in Bali and we'll see all of the influencers that are there. So we are nearly at the Suat waterfall which is the first waterfall that we're going to stop at and we just stopped like basically just these rice fields here 
Um, yeah, this looks really, really nice. And like over in the background, in that direction there, you can also see uh, Mount Batour, which is the one that we will be climbing hopefully in about two weeks time. But uh, yeah, the landscape itself is really, really cool though, like, because when these kind of things are in, in bloom, they just look savage like all across the landscape. Because um, they haven't, in Kangoo stuff, a lot of them were actually not uh, flourishing like this. But here, they are. So yeah, this looks pretty good. So this is a little Scoopy that we rented for 240k for three days. So I don't know, I think that's like, so, so 17 is, what is 10 euros? I think it's about 15 euros, so like 750 each for three days. <laughs> so we just arrived at the Suat waterfall because it's a nice little kind of grass tunnel and then a walk down. There isn't even that many people here, I was expecting them to be full of the people because all the tourist attractions here seem to be full of the people as you've seen from some of the other things in my video how busy it is here but the road here was pretty quiet and this seems pretty quiet okay it is slightly busy but uh it's <laughs> not as busy as well you might have a queue or something So we just had a coconut here at this waterfall and then we're gonna go on to our next one and hopefully we found one that like kinda has like a bath kind of area where you can actually like swim properly. Here is it's actually way more full of people than we actually thought until you got down there. Um so hopefully we have better luck for the next one, which is like half an hour away again. So we just arrived at the Goja Ria to waterfall, uh, which hopefully has like kind of like a bathing area as well. But um, yeah, it's 20,000 to get in here, which is like 120 or whatever, something like that. Um, yeah, the Google Maps brings you like the most awkward way possible to get to these places. Like it's just, it's just bonkers really. Like, so it took us like over an hour to get here and some pretty terrible roads. Um, especially because I'm not that experienced on the scooter as well. Like it's kind of just a bit, I don't know, annoying. But anyway, we're here. I'm gonna go to one more after this and uh, then we're gonna get some food because uh, what did you see in like Kangu and that all area and Uru but itself like they all have nice restaurants um, around here uh, they're a little bit more on the baddie belly side of things like so yeah a bit more apprehensive There's not many people here, which is very strange. I thought there would be more to go up. And then there's a great little view down there. Oh, I see some people. I think I was wrong. There's definitely people here. It's pretty cool, just having this like pool and stuff you can just go into. Um, I know it's man made, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Definitely gonna go in this one. Not that many people, but yeah, I'm gonna look at the waterfall first over here. Like you're just going up to the top of this thing, and you're getting absolutely soaked. Like I'm getting sprayed to hell here. Like, but it's definitely worth coming in and having a look at this thing. We're down here, like, you probably can't really hear me that well, but it's definitely worth doing. And we're gonna go have a little dip in the other thing, like, but the waterfall here, way more impressive than the last one. I wouldn't really bother that much with the last one, if you only had a limited amount. So now we're just gonna head out of here, grab some food, and then head to basically the last waterfall. And then we're gonna have a little bit of a thing about what we're gonna do, because We've come like an hour outside Ubud. We have to try and see what else is around here, so it's not a kind of a bit of a not a wasted journey by just doing the two waterfalls. Um, but yeah, really, really good. Do recommend coming down to this one. Maybe not the first one. Not as good at all. So we just arrived to the Tupac Sipang. I think that's right. Waterfall. Um, I feel it's gonna be a lot busier. Seems to be a bit of a setup here. Um, with like bars restaurants, 
lots and lots of bikes, cars, all that kind of stuff. And um, we just had food here. Um, I think Laura found a fly in a burrito. Possibly not that good, but uh, fingers crossed that we're going to be okay. Um, yeah, we're going to head down here now. Quick look. And uh, yeah, then head back to the wood. Here we have a rubbish from the cloning and bottles. But uh, it is nice here, nice man made stuff here. Not really sure why, I think it's probably due to irrigation for the rice fields, but uh, yeah, this is nice. So this is the waterfall, but like it's just like down there. That's where we're going, like, but yeah, you can see it from here. Obviously you've noticed like these streams and stuff, they're all like low kind of uh, tide, or not tide, just water, as you see. But you know what I mean, low low streams at the moment, like so you're not seeing a full force what, what these can actually do. Take my shoes off, hold them. Yeah. Fucking hell, it's tough on your feet. Three sliders or something, I didn't, Laura does. All right, so here we are. Ah, fucking hell. Excuse the language, but very sore. Pretty cool here, all right, though. This is yeah, Fort Doom definitely do bring some sort of feet protection. It fucking kills your feet. Rock formation stuff is so cool here though, like the little cave and like the whole walk up. It is really really cool like. Um I heard some people say your one wasn't as the other one was better. Um and they're pretty on par. But I would say visit these two because they're pretty close to each other. About a 10 minute uh, drive on scooter between each. And yeah, it's supposed to be more commercialized, more food, whatever, all that kind of stuff as well. But um, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. Um, but yeah, the feet is a big problem, and we're swimming stuff, because I also don't have it on. So this is the Mexican we ate at earlier. Very, very cool design and stuff. The food is, was good, but it's still pending. <laughs> Whether it's going to have us in a mess or not. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed our trip just to see all the different types of waterfalls that are basically within like an hour and a half of Ubud. The scootering coming back at rush hour was absolutely crazy. I've never experienced anything like it in my life, just how busy it really is. Uh, it's different from when we've been getting uh, like taxis everywhere. Um, but yeah, today now we're going to be going to one of the temples here uh, called this Goa Gaia Temple. I'm definitely saying it wrong. And then we are going to the famous like monkey forest and then we're going to a really cool place for dinner later like so yeah hopefully you enjoy this and you can see two things that but look these are the main things that tourists do do here as well in Ubud so yeah it's kind of following the beaten track <laughs> we arrived at the Gaia Goa temple and um, just where we pulled in we were straight over hassling hassling you need these pants or whatever to come in look we bought them they're I don't know like these blue things and or bought a green one but they say you do need them um, to come in here but you can actually just get them from the place the ticket place as well but we just said look it's not that much it was like a tenner for me and Laura was like 18 something like that which <laughs> I know it's a bit of a nuisance but um, look at least we can use it for the rest of the temples that we do go into Very, very smoky in here. Very smoky. God.
the detail on these buildings is just so, so cool. So there's like a whole kind of like marketplace. I didn't want to film it because there's just loads of um, locals barking and stuff. There's like a whole like marketplace just making loads of like random stuff. I don't understand it. I'm sure it's not random, but I don't understand it. Like, but yeah, the hustle here is uh, well and truly alive. <laughs> This temple is really, really nice and it's huge and there's loads to kind of see. It's like 50,000 rupees to come in, like 3 euros. But uh, yeah, just don't buy the thing that we did because you don't actually need to because you can actually just get one from the people that at the ticket office site. Um, yeah, we just got scammed, but it's fine because it wasn't that much money. <laughs> Yeah, this temple is really good. I do recommend coming to it. Just the hassling at the uh, at the start has kind of just left a little of a sour taste in your mouth. It's because you're kind of like, fuck's sake, like they just did me. I know it was only a tenner like, but you know, it still leaves a bit of a sour mouth in your taste because then you're kind of fucking complaining about it for the whole time because you know that you got done. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, it's fine. Lovely temple, definitely do go visit, and not that busy. So we've just arrived in the monkey forest, and hopefully we'll be able to get some good stuff of the monkeys, like, and they don't try to take my stuff. Especially the camera, I don't want them to take it. The big one, big big boy. It's mad how close you can actually get to them. Like he's only like three or four feet away from me, and you're just gonna get really close to them. They don't really seem to be like that bothering of people. Not like I've seen on Instagram. They don't really seem to do anything to you. Don't pay any attention to you as you do something. You want to feel a plane dead here? This like walkway that we're on right now is see where you get so close to them, like they're all sat on the edges. Um, which is pretty cool. You're so so close to them. You don't know whether one's gonna grab onto you or not, but uh for the most part like they're just lying on the ground doing nothing. <laughs> that was the monkey forest here Luba, and yes it is touristy, yes it is busy, but I don't think there's anything else really like it, so yeah, definitely do it, and it was 80,000 stewards. The selfie thing was closed, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. I've never been that up close, like they're literally like right next to you. It's, uh, yeah, it's good. So we've arrived for dinner at the Tamandiri, which is probably one of the things that will come up if you do look up like good restaurants and stuff with a great view here in Ubud. And yeah, so this is it. From here you have these really huge statues. And if you looking over, I'll get closer to them in a while, but I'm gonna order my food first. They have these crazy statues here everywhere. It's really cool. A lot of people obviously come here just to take the pictures and stuff, but 
Yeah, it's interesting. Let's go and have a look at them closer. Now to the really big ones that everyone is out taking pictures with was hopefully get like a decent shot of them because it is really busy over there. So yeah, it seems like a very like quiet place, so that's why I'm talking kind of quietly. But um, yeah, trying to get your photo and stuff out there is uh, so difficult because everyone's walking everywhere. So I don't know who these people who get these crazy Instagram shots this place are. I don't know what time they come at because it's just constant. But it is cool just to look at, not take photos. Like so to start, I got this mushroom soup, I like this beer that I haven't had. Charge. Shingarja. Normally it's just being tanked, but so just try something else. This is the second course. I got like a beef ring down. It was like 75k. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is just bizarre kind of little statues, really, to be honest. So yeah, verdict is meal was maybe 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10, I think. But the setting, these things, Looking over, can be beaten. And I got to try a new beer, which is good. But uh, yeah, these things are just mad looking statues. Don't really understand. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure it's something to do with Hindu religion. But yeah, look at them. Detail is mad as well. So today we're going to head out towards like, some of the famous rice fields that are here and also go to like a coffee plantation and try and visit some other temples. Uh, we were going to go to the one where you put like water over your face, but apparently it's like really busy and like kind of just go through loads of different like procedures and stuff to basically uh, go in there. So we're going to leave that one off and visit some that are actually in the surrounding areas to that, which are hopefully less busy. So we've arrived at the rice fields at Tegaland. I think that's right. Probably the most famous rice fields that are here in Uber. Like, so you've got a lot of the like resorts and pools and stuff that are all kind of coming off this. Um, we're just going to go down and walk in the rice fields and like, kind of have a look around. It's like 25,000 rupiah to come in here, which is, I don't know, like 150, not even, which is pretty good. Um, there's a bunch of ballet swings and stuff you can do here, which you've probably seen people do online, because uh, that seems to be a really common thing to do. But yeah, here we've arrived, and this is the view that we have from the top. So there's a lot of steps to get down, kind of into the basing room. But uh, it only gets better as you get closer kind of in and then to log up, because you're looking down, you kind of can't see the full terraces. But uh, now you can kind of see them a bit better. Again, like this is like one of the main kind of tour attractions. And there's rubbish everywhere. Which is not great. But anyway. At least you can look at some nice fields. It's kind of up behind me here. You've got like these beach clubs just over there. Look very, very impressive. We're going to go to one that's looking over the rice fields while we're here. And then you've got all like the ballet swings all along there as well. Like these ones are about 100 rupees each. Some of them down the way, down the road, are a lot more expensive. So this is actually one of the cheapest areas to do it in. And obviously with this being one of like the most Instagram spots here, there is loads of people here with drones. And you just see the kind of bloggers and stuff doing their, I don't know, blogging, same as me. But you know, different kind of style. So just come around the corner where it's actually like no built up stuff. And it's actually nearly way more impressive than the first bit. The bit is just a bit of that. I don't know. Build up, there's a small bit of commercialism, but here, there's nothing. Only one hut up there. That's it. We just stopped to have a coconut at the top of the rice field here. And 
yeah, look, it's pretty cool like, to be over here just having a coconut for like 30,000, which is like two euros. Um, yeah, it's, it is, it's pretty cool. Like, so look, this is the view that we have. So we're going to leave now, leave the rice terraces and go up to the uh, coffee plantation where we're going to try some of the uh, uh, Luwak coffee, which is the one that uh, basically comes out the arse of a raccoon. Well, a Luwak, but it looks like a raccoon. So we're going <laughs> to try that and just see what it's like and loads of other different variations as well. So yeah, looking forward to that. And um, yeah, hopefully then I think we're just going to maybe finish up, we're not, maybe not go to a temple because um, I'm just going to want to have a, a bit of a relax and um, yes, enjoy the rest of our time here. I think we're going to go to the pool club around here then tomorrow. So here's the Luwak. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus, that's mad when he's like looking at you like and he's like asleep. So he's actually asleep at the moment, but you can still see him. So here are, they have the like, Robusta coffee and also Arabica coffee that is also grown here on this on this farm that we're at and also there is a coca family's coca tree as well and then we are messing with the slowly until we open the first skin we have for three layers of skin mm -hmm. and this is the second skin just like a peanut and this is the second skin that's the second skin oh, yes. and this is the last skin Okay, until we got like this. And this is ready to roasting. And this is poo of animal blue up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the poo. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we must uh, wait in uh, maybe uh, six months until one year to process the coffee. Mm -hmm. To get the uh, chocolate. And this is the chocolate. The <laughs> Laurie, hey, favorite cinnamon. cinnamon. Is the one thing I don't like. <laughs> don't like I, I like it. <laughs> I like everything else. I like cinnamon. I really like cinnamon. And this is the cacao bean. I don't mind the but smell. But we must have trying first. Mm. And this is the lemon grass. And this is uh, vanilla. That's the vanilla, small, the vanilla. small ones, yeah. And this is already. Uh, yes. yes. And this is the ginger. We have a two type of ginger. And this is the normal ginger or yeah, a white ginger. Ones, and this is red ginger. Know. Yeah. And for the red ginger, yeah. have a taste and a smell more strong. Ooh. Yes. I've never seen and red this ginger. This is the last one. Can't smell anything. <laughs> <laughs> and this is for the red ginger. The turmeric. Yeah, this is strong. So these are all the coffees that they do like on site here. So you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fourteen different types of coffee and tea that they produce here. Which is pretty amazing to be honest. <laughs> this is a coconut coffee. It's very good. Get out mm. of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't stay away from it like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, vanilla. You can turn the camera to you. <laughs> so at the same time. I know, it's my favourite one to be honest. Vanilla? Yeah. But yeah, we'd be here all day so you couldn't even understand it. We'd be trying 14 of these, but they're all really, really good. We've had like four of them so far. So, yeah. And Last one, avocado, avocado coffee. Avocado. Oh, yes. And we come back with the coffee and a, a palm sugar. Mm. It's quite nice. That, it, does, it does taste exactly like an avocado, but it's not what you would think it would taste like at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is actually, yeah, this is an avocado coffee. Good. So guys, I can't recommend coming to this place enough. It's Suka Bali Agro. It's right beside one of the famous temples where you go like wash yourself in. And the guys here are really, really nice. It's a really nice setting. Like, so like we're kind of sat here overlooking like the rice field. And we had all these teas. And now we're going to have like the famous Luwak coffee as well um, and also it's kind of more local so you're kind of more supporting like local community it's basically what uh, one of the guys told us like so and it's not that busy apparently the other places are going to be very very busy with tourism like so 
do come to somewhere like this and you can just go to the temple as well while you're here as well so you can kind of do both things so yeah hopefully I'm looking forward to trying this Liwak coffee because it's the only thing we haven't tried yet so here it is the world's most elusive or expensive coffee probably not the most expensive coffee you're going to get because this is about five euros but expensive for Bali That is really good. Very pleasantly surprised. Same. I can actually I wasn't see. Really yeah. Knowing what to expect. <laughs> yeah, it's really good coffee. Um, I wasn't know what to expect, but uh, yeah, really good. So we walked over to the tea tree empire, like so that temple, like it's one of the most popular ones that's here, like, and it's crazy, crazy busy over there. So we just left it off, like it's not worth it. You know, we crammed in with those people, like, so we're just gonna leave it. Um, we're just gonna head back now and yeah, relax the evening and just get some food. Yeah, so tomorrow we're gonna be going to the like famous kind of swimming pool area that you can look at over, over the rice terraces. Actually, not gonna bring my camera. I'm gonna just have like a day off without it and just enjoy what's there because um, there's no point really. Like you're just in the basic swimming pool. You've all seen the Instagram pictures, the videos, all that kind of stuff. So there's no there's no need for me to do it. Like so, I'm gonna finish up then on Friday. I'm just gonna do basically just around Ubud itself because we actually haven't spent that much time actually in the town and walking around during the day. We've walked around at night time but we're going to have a look around during, uh, during the day go to some of the markets, that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, then Saturday we're just going to have job, jobs to do really before we go to the Gilly Islands which is probably going to be our best bit of, it, of the whole trip. Um, I think I'm really looking forward to going there. And hopefully the boat is okay because I've heard some bad things with the fast boats are meant to be Pretty unsafe, but we went with uh, Blue Water Express, which has the highest safety rating. Like so, yeah. Hopefully, it's pretty going to be pretty good. Also, yeah, I just wanted to touch on the club that we went to yesterday. It was uh, Creta in Ubud by the rice fields. Like, it's a really nice place, really lovely setting and stuff. But you are literally just around by all of these people running around taking the photos and stuff. And I don't know, I felt very uncomfortable there to be honest. Really, really nice place though. Like it's cheap to go, cheap to get in there. The food is over overpriced for what you get elsewhere. Um, but yeah, it, no, it's good. Uh, I do recommend going there, but don't spend that long there. I don't think. I don't think it's worth it. But um, yes, look, that was my experience there, to be honest. Like, and yeah, so I didn't. I didn't really film any. I didn't film anything there because like, yeah, so it's kind of like a beach club and people are just enjoying themselves. Although everyone else is running around with cameras and drones and whatever. So yeah, I don't. Anyway, look, next time we're filming, I'll be in the Gilly Islands. I've explained my experience going over on the boat as well. So, yeah, hopefully you can enjoy this because it's going to be my favourite part, I hope, because that's what I think it is going to be.